Herkese merhaba. Değerleme sınıfı Profesör Doktor Asfat Damodaran ile devam ediyor. Bugün ikinci oturum ve ikinci oturumun konusu içsel değerlemede temelleri atmak. Geçen bölümde öne çıkan noktalardan birisi bir varlığın bir değere sahip olabilmesi için zamanın herhangi bir noktasında pozitif nakit akımları üretmesi gerektiğiydi. İkincisi ise bu varlıkların ilk başlarda negatif nakit akımları üretse bile ileride daha yüksek oranlı bir şekilde pozitif nakit akımları sağlaması üzerineydi. Bu kapsamda da içsel değerlemenin nakit akımları üreten varlıklar için tasarlanmış bir teknik olduğundan bahsedilmişti. Bunun hemen ardından riske göre düzeltilmiş olarak iki önermeden bahsedilmişti. Bugün ise ben kendi yorumlarımı kısa tutarak videoya geçeceğim hemen. Sadece bir konuda önemli olduğunu düşündüğüm katkıyı sunmak istiyorum videonun öncesinde. İndirgenmiş nakit akımları değerlemesinde şirketin ya da işletmenin tamamı değerlenebileceği gibi sadece öz kaynaklar üzerinden de bir değerlendirme yapılabilir. Equity kelimesi bazen öz kaynaklar veya öz sermaye bazen de hisse senedi anlamında kullanılmaktadır. Buradaki fark bilançonun yükümlülükler kısmına baktığımızda yabancı kaynaklar ve öz kaynaklar olmak üzere varlıkların nasıl finanse edildiğini görüyoruz. Yabancı kaynaklar kısa vadeli ve uzun vadeli yabancı kaynaklar olarak ikiye ayrılabilir. Fakat benim burada belirtmek istediğim nokta öz kaynakların bilançoda defter değeriyle aynı şeyi ifade ettiği ve defter değerinin ödenmiş sermayeye bölünmesiyle hisse başına defter değerine ulaştığımızı bilmenizi istiyorum. Bu da bazen değerlemede hisse senedi, bazen de öz kaynakları almamızın belirli bağlam içerisinde değerlendirilmesiyle anlaşılacaktır. Şimdi videoya geçelim. Now here's one vehicle that I think of, that I can use to think about discounted cash flow valuation. I find it very useful. When I look at a business, I can look at an accounting balance sheet, right? We've seen accounting balance sheets that are assets to one side, liabilities to the other, but they're accounting assets and accounting liabilities. I prefer to use what I call a financial balance sheet. A financial balance sheet at one level is far simpler than an accounting balance sheet. At another level, it's far more complex. There are only two items in each side. On the asset side of the balance sheet, I have investments in place. Those are investments you've already made as a business in the past. Those are the investments that are producing cash flows for you today. The other asset that you see there are growth assets. These are investments I expect you to make in the future. How far into the future? Next year, two years out, five years out, forever. I'm giving you credit for investments you haven't even thought about yet. That sounds strange, right? But that's exactly what you do when you value a growth company, right? You're giving them credit based on expectations, perceptions, hope. Nothing wrong with it. That's reality. On the other side of the balance sheet, notice there are only two items, debt and equity. There are only two ways you can fund a business. You can borrow the money or use your own money. Whether it's a public business or a private business, those are your two choices. Now, here's why I like a financial balance sheet framework. When I sit down to value business, I have to make a choice. I can value either the equity in the business or I can value the entire business. You see, what's the difference? When I value equity in a business, I have blinders on. All I care about are the equity investors. I look at the cash flows that the equity investors get out of the business. Those are the cash flows left over after I've made my interest payments, my principal payments, all the payments due to the bank. Cash flows to equity are cash flows that equity investors can take out of the business. If those are the cash flows I'm focusing on, the discount rate I should be using is the rate of return that equity investors would need to make given the risk of that equity. Now, we haven't looked at the details of how to do that yet, but the intuition should be pretty clear. The riskier an equity, the higher that rate of return is going to be. Cash flows to equity discounted back at that rate of return, which we call a cost of equity, is the value of equity in a business. Now think about it. You buy stock in a publicly traded company, you're an equity investor, right? Technically speaking, the only cash flow you actually get from the company is dividends. The dividend discount model is a special case of an equity valuation model. It's the oldest discounted cash flow model around, and you're trying to value equity based on the cash flows they actually receive from the company. As we go through this class, one of the things I'm going to talk about is what to do about companies that don't pay out what they can afford to in dividends. Let's face it, not all companies return the cash that they have available as dividends. 
So we'll talk about alternate measures of cash flows to equity that look at potential dividends rather than actual dividends, but you're focused on valuing equity. You think, what's the choice? Rather than value equity, you could try to value the entire business. Think about it as valuing the asset side of the balance sheet rather than the liability side. So you're looking at the assets, you look at the cash flows they produce, and remember, those cash flows go to service both the equity investors and the lenders. So you look at the collective cash flows that both equity investors and lenders get out of the business. It's almost counterintuitive because if you're a business owner, you tend to think about the cash flows to equity as your cash flows. I'm asking you to expand your vision. Look at the collective cash flows you get out of the business. That cash flow is called the cash flow to the firm. And if that is the cash flow you're discounting, the discount rate you're going to use is a weighted average of what equity investors demand, which is the cost of equity, and what lenders demand, which is the cost of debt. In corporate finance, that weighted average is the cost of capital. You discount cash flows to the business at the cost of capital. You value the entire business. Let's say you're still interested in the equity. It's easy to get there, right? Once you value the business, all you need to do is subtract out what you owe, the value of your debt. You should have the value of equity. So there are two ways you can value equity. You can value the equity directly by taking cash flows to equity and discounting at the cost of equity. You can value the equity indirectly by valuing the business and subtracting out debt. You might say, which one should I use? If you do this right, you should actually get the same value for equity using both approaches. But here comes one of the first principles in valuation. Never mix and match cash flows. What am I talking about? Don't discount cash flows to equity at the cost of capital. Don't discount cash flows to the business at the cost of equity. You might have put in an immense amount of work coming up with the numbers, but if you mix and match, all is lost. Your valuation is going to go off the rocks. So your first step when you do a valuation is to make sure you're being internally consistent, that your cash flows and your discount rates are matched up. If you're worried about that abstraction, we'll come back and flesh it out a little more as we start talking about actual valuations. But in summary, here's what I want you to take away from this session. Intrinsic valuations about valuing companies based on their specific characteristics. Discounted cash flow valuation is a tool to estimate intrinsic value. You need to estimate expected cash flows and adjust for risk, either by replacing the expected cash flows with certain equivalents or adjusting the discount rate for risk. And you have to make a choice. Are you valuing the equity in the business? Are you valuing the entire business? That choice will govern how you estimate the cash flows and what discount rate you use.